Glad that you're here. I'm Benjamin, one of the KCGL tutors of the GSE program of the University of Klagenfurt. This video shall help you to get into game studies and understand what it is about and especially help students with a tech background to get the real benefit of engaging with the field of game studies. I hope you enjoy. The field of game studies is an enrichment for academia as well as for the industry. It is, however, not always evident, especially to new students or students with a tech background, what this is all about. Here I'll present you briefly why game studies is critical to progressive developments in how we think about video games and how they are being produced. So let's start. New students have often asked me if philosophy and game studies are somehow connected. These academic fields are not just somehow connected, they are essentially connected which helps us to understand which objectives game studies have. Ask 10 philosophers what philosophy is and you will get 10 different answers on what it is. But where most would agree is that this intellectual industry is about articulating phenomena, trying to put complex observations into thought. Today less, but until Hegel in the 19th century it was also about creating systems that would explain the world and its workings. However, as the French philosopher Gilles Deleuze once said, it is also about inventing concepts, combining different ideas and creating new perspectives. In the early 20th century, the Frankfurt School came along and used the economic philosophical writings by Marx to reinvent Marxism, in form of what they would call critical theory. Critical theory is philosophy that tries to uncover the regressive underbelly of progress and lift the veil of ideology. While well, most people in the 40s would think that cinema is something nice, Horkheimer and Adorno would condemn it as a stupidifying mass manipulation machinery. The Birmingham School, spearheaded by Stuart Hall, would then take critical theory and craft cultural studies, a field that would base its analysis on critical theory and confront especially pop culture with gender, class and race stereotypes. With that, the path to game studies had been paved. Early scholars such as Janet Murray and Espen Arset would critically interrogate video games for their meaning, structure, representations and so on. By now game studies looks at all that is linked with the phenomenon of video slash games, including nowadays how games are even produced. Game studies from a technical perspective operates after a very universal principle to be found in humanities in general. Namely, the detection of a phenomenon, the application of a theory or method, and the analysis on basis of their synthesis. An example would be looking at the game GTA V, where we accumulate wealth, weapons and property. Applying critical or Marxist theory would help us to understand that GTA V is so much fun for Western people because it addresses our capitalistic upbringing and environment and would most likely be less fun for people who grew up in capitalism if we wouldn't be able to accumulate commodities. You might think now, okay, that is great, but don't we have already enough book clubs in the world? Why would even someone care about an analysis like that? If you ask me, knowledge is a reward in itself, but I'm pragmatic enough to understand that this is not enough for an explanation especially for aspiring students and engineers striving for a career in the industry. Game studies does have an impact even though it's a little more subtle and takes time to unfold. This is however important to remain sustainable. On this slide you can see a simplified cycle of how knowledge is generated in game studies and how it affects other areas of research and development. So at the beginning, there is always an ambitious researcher, someone like you one day. You do good, solid and innovative research that gets hopefully published by influential outlets through lectures, seminars, workshops and other public work. Through that, you generate a readership. This readership is in 95% of all the cases, not the average video game player or media consumer, but game studies research is primarily read and studied by experts and students who want to become experts themselves one day. 
These experts and students eventually get inspired by your research and will implement aspects of it into their work. Like that, new games with new features, mechanics and narratives are developed and produced, ultimately ending up where we started, at the ambitious researcher using the game for new research. These cycles take time to influence the industry, but have done so already in many regards. If you think about games like Papers, Please, Gone Home or Journey, you'll realize that with these games, new standards have been set for what a game could be mechanically, which narrative it would have and how it is told. And if you're really interested why these games are so different, take a look at who created those games and what their backgrounds were. If you think of the representation of gender or minorities in video games, we have seen a lot of change in diversity over the years. Just think of The Last of Us Part II, Valorant or even Battlefield. Feminism is a driving force in game studies and has provided effective perspectives to endorse these changes. In addition, exploitation and sexism remain an issue in the industry, even though it has started to change in the last years. But also shady business practices like loot boxes have had to face regulations. These issues are primarily brought to attention by investigative journalism, which nonetheless inform their claims not seldomly with game studies perspectives. There is however also the need to understand video game culture, understanding the flows of trends, the needs and demands of communities, which many game studies researchers take on themselves in form of digital anthropology. Game studies has been actively tackling these domains for over 20 years and while change is not happening overnight, it cannot be denied that influential scholars in the field were able to contribute to the progressive change of the industry through their inspiring work and education of new generations. Making game studies an indispensable source of innovation for video games and its industry. However, game studies is not playing and talking only about games in the everyday sense. Game studies is an accepted academic field with standards. To talk game studies, so to speak, a shared vocabulary is needed. This means that while on Twitch, streamers might interchangeably use words like immersion, flow, gameplay or dynamics, as an aspiring professional, we need to differentiate between accepted definitions, terminologies and their theories. Also, game studies, like any other academic field, is a stupendous intellectual project of lifetimes and generations of researchers contributing to an ongoing discourse. Rightfully, few people will take your research serious if you neglect the perspectives of other experts and declare your own opinion to be true. There is only progressive research in sociogenesis, the creation of shared knowledge. If you have that vocabulary and you have read and understood the perspectives of other researchers, it will be time for you to discuss with other researchers and colleagues and begin to write and articulate your ideas within the framework of game studies. Start a blog, write an essay, attend a conference and workshop. Educate yourself and others.